Everything that could have gone wrong in the first six months went wrong. My car got totaled. I was in a very unhealthy living situation. 9-11 happened and the towers fell. And honestly, it's by the grace of God that I wasn't in them that day. I went bankrupt before the age of 21. My life was a mess and it had just gotten started. So how did I go from that horrible situation to writing for executives at Coca-Cola, GE, UPS, Beachbody, and all these big global companies? Stick with me for a few minutes and I'll tell you how I became an executive speechwriter. I was born in Toronto, Canada, but raised in Miami, Florida. And the funny thing is when I tell people I'm from Miami, they instantly think of South Beach, right? They think of palm trees, fashion models, luxury stores, and I'm like, no. I'm from Dade County, I am from 305. I'm from Trick Daddy, Miami. Uncle Luke, Pitbull, and Trina, Miami. Rick Ross, Miami. Not this, but it's all good. I decided to become a writer in the spring of 1998, which was the junior year of high school for me, but I was really more focused on the creative. I wanted to write fiction. I wanted to write poetry. Uh, to be honest with you, I didn't even know what a speechwriter was until I became one. I worked at a bookstore and I wrote my first novel by the age of 19. Uh, because somewhere along the lines, I had read that to become successful as a writer, you're going to need at least 10 years. So once I read that, I was like, well, I might as well get started now. Fast forward another year and I made my way to New York City. I was ready to go to school at this time and I had heard that if you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. So never being afraid of a challenge, I packed up and I went to New York. Everything that could have gone wrong in the first six months went wrong. So how did I go from that horrible situation to writing for executives at Coca-Cola, GE, UPS, Beachbody, and all these big global companies? Well, what happened was I was an executive assistant during the day at that time, and I was really bad at that job. I knew, I was so bad that I knew I was either gonna have to quit or get fired because I wasn't doing very good. <laughs> and um, my boss at the time was very cool with it. She said, you know what, you're a great employee, but you're in the wrong seat. So go ahead and look around the company. Basically, this isn't working out. Um, so I was happy that she was willing to, you know, work with me while I looked around the company. So make a long story short, I moved over to corporate communications and I excelled very well there. And then within six months of being a writer in corporate communications, I became, I heard that the person who wrote for the CEO had quit and he didn't have anyone writing for him, executive communications. I didn't even know what that was, as I said before. Um, so I went back over and asked about the position. It wasn't officially a position yet, but basically he had a speech coming up and no one had written it. So I took it upon myself to go home, research him on YouTube, find as much as I could find to learn his voice and write a demo speech, if you will. And I went back to work and turned it in. I gave it to um, his assistant, uh, one of the good things about being in the office is I knew everybody, so I wasn't intimidated about walking back in there. So I gave her a copy of the speech without my name on it, and I just said, Sit, just show it to him, see if he likes it, see what happens. And don't you know, he called me himself two days later and asked if I was the one who wrote that speech. And I said, absolutely. I was horrible at answering phones and I was bad at the calendar, but I guarantee you one thing. If you need something written and you need it written well, I can do it. So that, in a nutshell, is how I became an executive speechwriter. And once I started writing for the CEO, I basically inherited everybody in the C-suite. I wrote for the chief medical officer, I wrote for the COO, and I wrote for some of the regional vice presidents of the company. I inherited all the executives. And that's how I got my start. Now, I work independently today, but that's how it started for me.